Here's the thing about people. Here's the thing about the universe, but let's talk about people. Everyone has a lot of ideas. And some of those ideas are good, and some of those ideas are bad. The way of a person, one of the ways that God judges a person, and one of the ways that we can judge a person, is how much of their ideas are truth, and how much of their ideas are evil, false. And whether or not that person is trying to pursue that truth, is trying, it has, whether it's all of their ideas, or just a certain key number of those ideas, or if it's just the majority of their ideas, like, because they have a few ideas that drive them, or, or they're completely on the true path, or this, the majority of their ideas are on the correct path. And so they, they are on the side of truth. They're on the, on the side of what's good. And so you can judge people by what their, their ideas are, what their beliefs are for the majority. Because there's people whose most of their ideas are good, but some of their ideas are bad. There's some people who only have good ideas. They're just, they are pure of heart. They have, they, they, they're, they're like a servant of God. They have the truth and they speak the truth. And there's some people that they have a few good ideas that drive them. The rest of the, their ideas are wrong, but the things that drive them are the good ones. And there's some people that they only have a couple of good ideas. And it doesn't drive them, but just because you repudiate that person doesn't mean that you have to repudiate all of those particular ideas. And there's some people who have nothing but falsehood, nothing but bad ideas, and nothing but lies and evil ideas. But that's the thing. People are not usually monolithic. They have many different ideas. You can hear why someone you can take inspiration from someone you can take teaching from someone you can you know you can join together with someone even if they have a few bad ideas as long as you don't you know uphold those ideas you know for example John Wayne John Wayne had so much that was true and good and he had some things that were false, some things that were bad, some things that were ignorant. And I think, I think in John Wayne's case, if he had, in a lot of ways, he was more fair in a racial sense than, than many. Number one, he was a Republican, which is, the, which is and was and still is the party of anti-racism, the party of integration, the party of fairness, the party of equality, the party of being human beings instead of being, you know, dominated by racism. You know, it's the party of anti-slavery, for crying out loud. So that's, the, the, so that's number one. But he was also willing to put the people in, 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 he was also willing to put the the well-being of other countries like the moral right of what should be above american national uh, prosperity so for example in the panama canal he thought the panamanians should own their own country of course they should and he was one of the very few people who would stand up and and do that so you know the democrats i would say are 90% wrong, 80% wrong. But they do have that remainder. And this is something that I think is true across the board. They have a 20% of things, 20% of things that are very good, very true. You know, there's things that they might care about, but they're care they're trying to do it in the wrong way. And then they have like all their belief system. They have a couple of goals, you know, a couple of goals that are noble, some ideas that are noble, some perspectives that are noble. And then they go around and the rest of their belief system is literally fascism. It's literally 
socialism, is literally Marxism, is literally, you know, slavery. So, you know, there's pretty much, I would say, the 80 to 90% of liberalism is, is pure evil and is false. But there's a great deal of individual goals, such as let's not pollute the world, you know, such as let's not have an empire. But the people who are actually pursuing those goals of not polluting the world and not having empires, it's really mostly the Republicans. It's, it's actually the Democrats say that they hate fascism, then they do fascism. They say that they hate empire, then they do empire. They say that they hate racism, then they do racism. They say that they, they, they say that they're opposed to everything, and then they do those very same things, and they, they, they try to turn everything on its head. They make the, uh, the bullies into the victims, and then try to protect victims. But those victims are not the victims; they're the bullies. <sighs> Anyways, what I'm saying is, people are a mix usually. They're usually a mix. They are usually not all the way one way or all the way another way. You know, someone can have most of their ideas be good, but then there's 20, 30% of those ideas, maybe just 10%, maybe 2% of their ideas that are bad. <coughs> and, you know, this is something I need to, to be better at as well, but you just gotta, you have to love them, but you don't have to endorse everything that they say and do. So John Wayne, I was just reading on the life of John Wayne. You know, so much of what he believed in was good, and yet he had some, some bad ideas too. I would say he's on, he's one of those people who's on the side of good, but he's got some ideas are not good. So I would say he's 70% or 80% good. He's got 20% that's bad. But those 20% of things, the smell that comes off of them is really strong. So, you know, and I think that's what God calls having a tear in your ministry. It's like you're a field of wheat, and then you have weeds growing up in that field. And it really, it spoils the crop. It, it, you have a good crop, but it would have been so much better. It's like you have some good food. It's like you make a souffle and you pop the souffle. It's like you make a good soup and then you sneeze in it, you know? Would it still feed you? Yes, but you sneezed in it. And it's always unfortunate and horrible when that happens, but that doesn't mean that their recipe is bad. And the difference between the life of a person and these metaphors, these metaphors that I'm using, is that the life of a person, you can pick it apart. You can pick apart the life of a person. You can pull out the bad stuff. You can, you, you can pull out the parts of uh, Walt Disney. Walt Disney had some some bad ideas. Walt Disney did some bad things somewhere in his life, and I can list them for you if you want. But I can take Walt Disney's life, and I can pull apart the bad stuff. I can remove that. I can pull apart the bad. I can pull apart the bad stuff. I can, I can pick out the bad stuff and pull that apart. You can pick it apart. You can separate. You can pull things apart and separate them from what people's lives were, from what were some of the bad things or bad ideas that they did or had or happened to them or they did or they, their ideas or their desires that they had that weren't good. And that's the good thing is that God judges us in a very fair and righteous way. He doesn't just throw a whole thing in the garbage can just because one part of it is bad. And he doesn't put something on a throne just because it's 90% good. You know, Donald Trump is, I'd say he's 80 or 90% good. But there's some things such as fighting the Second Amendment, not standing up for the Fourth Amendment, trying to divide the land of Israel, you know, trying to, trying to make a friendship with people who are not our moral, philosophical, spiritual, or theological, or political friends and enemies, or cultural friends or enemies. Communists are never going to be your friend. Fascists are never going to be your friend. And Donald Trump is a powerful force for democracy and righteousness and honesty and republic. I think he's trying to make friends with people so that we don't have to go to war with them because I don't think he wants to have a war. But I think we have to learn 
that God is not going to sacrifice the morals of what's right and wrong in order to avoid a conflict. God is a God who fights evil. And if peace is not attainable, he goes to war. And if peace is categorically unattainable, he goes to war. God categorically doesn't negotiate with Satan and with the forces of Satan and with the ideas of Satan and with people who deeply believe in the ideas of Satan because God is at war with Satan and Satan's ideas. And God knows, and I'm just going to po portray this in the, the view of God, God, God himself knows that it is much better for your, for your own people and for your own country and for yourself and for the cause of what's right, the cause of what's good that you care about. And, and everyone has something different that they care about, and God cares about what you care about. He cares about what he cares about, and he cares about what you care about, because he shares you, what you care about. He cares about it too. He knows that it's better to take your country, to take your people, to take your personal private life through warfare in order to do what's good instead of sitting down and going under the system. That's why we have to leave Egypt. It's getting out of Egypt. In order to get out of Egypt, you had to go through 12, 12 plagues, and it was a lot of, it was a shit storm. It was a shit storm, but they got free. And God is kind of belligerent that way, and it's good. He's willing to start the fight, and he's willing to fight the fight even if he doesn't start it. Because that's what brings freedom. That's what's true, and it's the right thing to do. And that's what World War II was. We fought World War II the same way. Thanks for listening.